Welcome to Wandsworth Tonight. I'm Leslie Strachan. This evening's headlines. The number of hate crimes against Muslims has risen by almost three quarters in a year. Good evening, and for the next 15 minutes on Wandsworth Radio, you'll hear the latest local news from across Wandsworth. And we start tonight with the number of hate crimes against Muslims in London has risen by almost three quarters in a year. More than 800 Islamophobic offences were recorded by the Metropolitan Police in the year to July, compared to fewer than 500 over the previous 12 months. Merton Borough Council saw the highest spike with a number of incidents rising from 8 to 29 in the 12-month period from July last year. In Wandsworth, there were 16 attacks last year, and there's been 16 so far this year. In Lambeth, there were 17 attacks last year, which rose to 40 this year. Scotland Yard say it's partly down to a willingness of victims to come forward and a greater awareness amongst police staff. Khalil Youssef, spokesperson from the local Amya Muslim organisation, joins us now. Hello, Khalil. Hi, good evening. How are you, Leslie? Good. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, Khalil, what's your response to these figures? Is this a surprise to you? It really is uh, rather disappointing to know that there were 816 Islamophobic offences that were recorded, I believe, by the police with the help of the organisation MAMA. Uh, all hate crimes, including those against Muslims, are very unfortunate and we're pleased that the police is taking swift action in order to try and deal with those hate crimes as best as they can. But the challenge for all of us is to try and uh, remove the causes of these hate crimes and regrettably Islam uh, is not getting the best of press, sometimes for good reason. There are those uh, in the Muslim community that are carrying out uh, extremist acts, and as a result of that, people are tarnishing all Muslims with the same brush. The truth is, Leslie, that uh, in Islam, it doesn't condone extremism or terrorism at all, and in fact, the Ambiya Muslim community absolutely condemns all forms of terrorism and extremism as completely against the teachings of Islam. Uh, it is true that there are some out there that associate Islam with violence and with terrorism, and whilst there is some link between Muslims and Islam, the truth is that there is no link between Islam and terrorism. Indeed, there has been research that's been carried out on uh, those that say that uh, Islam and other religions are the causes of war. And they have found that in, I think, 2013, there was research in New York and Sydney, the Institute for Economics and Peace, that said that of all of the wars that took place in 2013, there was no general causal relationship between religion and conflict. So the question then, Leslie, is, well, how do we go about addressing these issues? And the answer to that is that religion, uh, Islam, and other religions do promote and practice peace. And it's important that uh, us as communities take responsibility for putting forward the true peaceful message of Islam and uh, great radio stations like yours who give us the opportunity to talk about those peaceful teachings should do more so that not only Muslims but Christians and Jews and Hindus, all of whom have a peaceful message, have the opportunity to put that forward on the radio, the television and other forms of media. Well, I mean, we're very glad to be part of that, to be able to put that message across. What else do you think can be done on a practical level, though, to make sure, you know, not everybody listens to us yet? Um, so how, what else can be done? Well, Leslie, I mean, you are surprisingly, uh, uh, I wouldn't say surprisingly, actually, you are very influential and you shouldn't be surprised about that. Religious communities, including the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, we have a very large population uh, in Merton where there has been the highest number of rises uh, of uh, hate crimes against Muslims. Uh, we have uh, an open door policy. People can come to the Begel Fadu Mosque in Morden, which is the largest mosque in Western Europe, and they can see how the true peaceful teachings of Islam manifest themselves 
and practice. That is one way that we can show people that they have nothing to fear from Islam, but in fact, Islam and other religions have a great deal to offer. Let, let me give you some examples of what some of the practical things that the Amdiyal Muslim community does. We don't just talk about peace, but we practice it. You know, the Amdiyal Muslim community over the course now of almost 30 years has raised millions of pounds for almost 100 charities, British charities, charities like the NSPCC, uh, charities like uh, Help for Heroes, charities like uh, local charities that don't necessarily get very much funding. And we do that not because we have any vested interest, but because we have a true altruism that finds its root in the basic fundamental teachings of Islam, which say that not only should you worship God, but you should serve your fellow man regardless of who they are. Whilst there are some extremists and terrorists that are shedding blood, we are giving blood. We donate hundreds and hundreds of pints of blood in order to save the lives of innocent individuals right here in this country. And the other thing that we do is we pledge a, a, an allegiance of loyalty to Britain. There is no conflict between being a Muslim or following your religion of Islam and being loyal to the country in which you live in. And in fact, we say that in schools, everybody should have a pledge of loyalty to Britain. That includes people of faith and people of no faith. Khalil, that's really very interesting, and I really think you've told us a few things that certainly I wasn't aware of tonight. So thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much, Leslie, for having us on.